Hello and welcome to this week's episode of 9 to 5 Nerds with Robert Swathwood, Corey Urkel, and Katrina Swathwood. Is that good? Sounds perfect. A little too fast. Okay, I'm going to go after this again. Hello. You doing Zootopia? And that's a good movie. Yeah, funny part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, welcome back to uh, 9 to 5 Nerds with, with us. Uh, if... I just blew into the microphone. Why? That's not a good idea. Do you like that in your ear holes? No. Anyways, uh, if you're listening to this, it is a Friday. And as of right now, you can go to our Patreon, throw in five bucks and get uh, the first set of bonus episodes, which we are toying around with calling uh, lunch break because our other bonus ones are nine to five nerds after five. And this one's going to be lunch break. Possibly. I don't know. I'm still. Are you second guessing it now? No, I'm not second guessing. I'm just kind of. What it's going to be is they're going to be 20 to 30 minute episodes of movies that we've watched and commentating afterwards. Sometimes it'll just be Katrina and I. Sometimes there'll be a guest. But uh, we are going to be talking about movies. The first two are. We did them a little while ago, but we're going to start doing them uh, a couple times a month now. And the last two were Ravenous and Quiz Show. But we recorded them a little while back with our old setup. So, but as of listening to this, you can go to our Patreon, which is 95 Nerds, and donate to hear the bonus episodes, which will be up now. Yay. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, I had seen Ravenous and Katrina hadn't, and she had seen Quiz Show and I hadn't. But, uh, sorry, I need to take a drink of tea. Okay, go ahead. But in the future, what I'm thinking about doing is is if you donate, I mean, you could look at the different tiers on Patreon, but if you donate, you can pick the movie. At what level? I think at 10 bucks. Okay. Five bucks, you get them all, including the bonus episodes we're going to do with Corey every once in a while. But for $10, uh, you know, you'll get a thank you on air. You'll, you'll uh, get the bonus episodes and you can pick a movie for us to watch. Which That's uh, kind of dangerous. Yeah, I know it is. But then that's within reason. We're not going to watch any uh like snuff films or, or i'm not gonna go out my way to buy something yeah we're not gonna go try to find a movie that's gonna cost us a hundred dollars to watch because it's a limited edition print of you know who knows what dr what caligari's whatever whatever cabinet cabinet i don't know no what was that movie that we watched in art that art class we're not talking about the imaginarium of dr parnassus that's with heath ledger this is... Anyways, somebody out there will know and tweet me and say, who oh, it's this. What's it about? Uh, it's Guy it's an old... It was like it the first... It was a silent film, wasn't it? Oh. Yeah, it was some first of something. It was before the talkies came out. Talkies. Uh-huh. Not the chip. I don't know if that's a Southern California thing. Nah. I don't know. Uh, but that's that's our news of now. I think we let y'all, y'all know last week that we were going to be doing some bonus episodes, but they're going to be coming probably... I'd say anywhere to from two to four episodes a month. Wow, that's aggressive. Well, it's not aggressive. We watch, like, the next one I'll tell you will be on this movie called Mute. We're not oh, gonna, we're actually going to talk about that? Yeah, we're not going to oh. talk about Mute on here. Uh, you you stay mute on that subject? Yeah, and, well, I'll tell you that it's, uh, it's a movie from Duncan Jones, who we, when Katrina and I just watched Moon, mm-hmm. and it's in the same universe as Moon. Is that relevant? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yes. So, I mean, it's it's in the same universe. So, I'll put that... Uh, Out there for the yeah, world. I won't tell you what we thought about Mute, but we absolutely loved Moon. I think we already said that on So, here. at the end of Sam Rockwell sitting at a diner, and he overhears somebody? No. Nope. That's the very last scene? No. no. Um, go ahead. Doorman duties? Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. You're late. You're late. I know. Sorry. No, we already started. Yeah, we already oh, started. Up, yeah. yeah. We we have business to do. Business. We're all business. It's business. It's business. No. Is that what, what? the song is? It's Isn't business it business time? time? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you okay. were doing fine. Yeah. I don't know the rest of the words. Okay. Um. But our guest today is Anthony Smith. We didn't want to do the same thing we did to Alan because apparently our guests are all late now. Two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row. 
weeks in a row. We haven't gotten onto any subjects yet. Oh, good. Get comfortable. Oh. Pull that mic up. Headphones, no headphones? No headphones for you. That's fine. We haven't bought headphones for guests yet. And oh. Corey hasn't even purchased his own headphones. Correct. <laughs> Son of a I'm bitch. I'm sure I could, I could find some. Yeah. Um, I brought some really good beer. This is like one of the best porters I've ever had. And I brought it to share. You're very soft-spoken. <laughs> you are very soft-spoken. Uh, sorry. That's I brought okay. some good beer to go. share. Um, I think you'd really like it. Maybe I'll try one. Maybe not. My stomach's been fucked up. Mm. We'll see. I've got I've got tea. Yeah, that something just pretty died. Good. Oh, was the was the? I think the air okay. went off. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> no, this stuff straight smells like there's like chocolate we'll in what it is. the beer. It's called um uh it's the shake. You can turn it around and it'll have the label on it. <laughs> <laughs> the shake. It's the shake chocolate porter from Balder Brewing. It's from Colorado. It's really good. Balder Brewing? Mm-hmm. Is it Boulder Brewing? Or Boulder. It's, I thought it was Balder, like Balder, Colorado. But it's, it might be Boulder, Colorado. It I don't is know. Boulder, it's Boulder, Colorado. Colorado. Uh, maybe I've been playing too oh. many video games like Baldur's Gate. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Baldur's Gate there? <laughs> yeah, Baldur's Gate and Baldur City. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. My stomach's been kind of messed up. It's really good. Beer settles the stomach. Does it? No, Does probably Does beer not. settle the stomach? Uh, well, we could find out. Uh, alcohol <laughs> settle anything. We had uh, we had micheladas. Is that what they're called? Yes. They're so good. Gross. We had those with uh, yeah I had enchiladas. Yeah, uh, he says that's gross, but Anthony's that pretentious guy that sits at the bar that says it's got an oaky aftertaste <laughs> with uh, hints of chocolate and rosemary. <laughs> and, and, uh, that's a real nice dirt taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it in? What was it in? Uh, Parks and Rec. It's got an oaky afterbirth. <laughs> Jesus. What? what was that in? Uh, the only thing I know is Grandma's Boy when they're at the like vegan restaurant and David Spade's the waiter and he's like, yeah. it's got a real nice dirt taste or something <laughs> like that. I like that movie. Me too. Uh, what's up, Katrina? Oh, nothing. I was just looking at something. This is going to be a long podcast because nobody brought anything. I have an article. We have our Harry Potter topic. I hope your article is not my article. They're all the same. It's prob- I guarantee you it's not. So uh, I've been trying to beat Detroit Become Human because Spider-Man comes out next week. And then hurry. Fallout comes out. And then Fallout comes out in November. Oh, I didn't I didn't think Fallout came out for a while longer. That makes me really happy. It's going November. Out sooner. It makes yeah. me really sad. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to beat uh, Detroit and you I'm playing it. Have human yet? Uh, close. Okay. I'm, we're fighting for equal rights, Corey. Aren't we all? No. <laughs> uh, so Some people actually have them. I have a question about that game. Yeah. So are the, since I have never played this game, I don't really know what they're called. Are they cyborgs? Are they androids. robots? Androids. androids. So are the androids fighting because they're trying to argue like what really consciousness is? Is that like kind of how it is? And they are they obviously, I mean, you can imagine they, they're built for the convenience service. of humans for service, yeah. for mm-hmm. nannies, whatever stuff around the house like ai right but yeah kind of but uh and you play as three different characters and there's different chapters and what happens is is something happens in two of the three storylines which uh breaks that barrier they have they self-realize yeah basically okay so uh and they're called deviants and more and more of them are starting to realize that they are not feelings yeah that they have feelings that they can love that they care and uh, they have senses of morality yeah. yeah it's it's what's crazy is i just did this scenario where i i'm i play straight arrow all the time i don't break the rules i don't do anything like that robert and, killed someone yeah you're in this situation Ooh. where you have to decide if you're going to kill this person who's who's trying to get away and i i was like oh shit oh shit oh shit and everything you do affects this is like the most elaborate uh, elaborate system of different choices because You'll see where your choices took you after each chapter, but it won't tell you what's behind the other things that you didn't choose. Huh. It'll just show you how far they go, but it won't tell you what they are. So it's, it's it's extremely intricate, and any decision affects the long outcome of the game and your relationships with different people. So I shot this guy, and I immediately felt bad. Like I almost turned off my PlayStation <laughs> so it Reset. wouldn't save, so I could restart the scenario. But the scenario was like one of the longer ones. Each chapter is probably like anywhere from 25 to 45 minutes. 
and uh but i'm like and now i'm three chapters past that and that one murder is still affecting mm. and i'm like this sucks dude i feel it, bad it, so I done it. it reminds me of westworld in a sense because in westworld the robots or the cyborgs or whatever they are start to become more self-aware and realize that like they do have like feelings and emotions and stuff like that and they're trying to um <clears throat> they're trying to basically figure out like what consciousness really is like because people are conscious beings right but these robots also are so like what's the difference right to to a certain de- degree um it's the blade runner theory yeah and it's it's super interesting and have you seen blade runner i have not you i've seen, seen the original just... forever ago but it's not it's a good movie yeah um, but if you, if you like that game a lot, you should definitely check out Westworld. It, it, it's weird cause it starts to make the people look like the bad guys. Because... I have no desire to really, no, I do. It's just, I'm like, I only get HBO when Game of Thrones is on oh, and I figured I enough. would watch Westworld when I was watching Game of Thrones because you can get it on the demand. Oh, okay. on, on the, the demand. demand. <laughs> I was going to say Robert. the HBO go app, but then I said the demand, the demand, but yeah, so you could do that. Are you both done with the game? I think I have four chapters left. Do you know what your cyborgs look like when they're yeah. not projecting their skin color and everything? It's Why white. are you asking? There was just a scene. Uh, I, I can't remember what article I read. When uh, games break their own rules, kind of. I guess, uh, is there a female AI cyborg girl, lady who goes on the run with a yes, kid or something? Yes, her name's Kara. And at one point in time, she's on the lamb. And Don't she, say anything because I might not have experienced that yet. Yeah. Spoiler alert. her hair. Yes, that happens. And then it's I seen I don't know whether it was revealed later on in the game, it's all like everything that's physically about them is a like hologram Program. projection, and they're basically just white blank slate robots. So it was funny. Like why did she cut her hair and why did her hair fall to the thing? It made fun of. It might have been her uh, perception. Perception of think you know she changed from being a robot to being a human. It's a dumbass human. <laughs> why? She could just think about what her hairstyle needs to be and change it. No, no, but she's and that how it works. She her, her whatever she looks like, what she wants to look. Maybe like? Maybe she doesn't know she can. <laughs> you're laughing, but it happens once in the entire probably 15 hours so, of the game. It's they never say in one point in the game that they're projecting anything onto them. It's I, not a rule. The they only stay thing the I notice is when they told him to take his face off. Yes, and he took his face off. But I mean, it's they never once say that it's a projection. Well, I've I watched. Uh, a clip of it, and it, well, basically, when two characters—I don't know—two characters are running somewhere. I don't know the gist of it. No, I know exactly the scene you're talking uh, about. Maybe they're. I, I don't want to say actually for what I saw. Um, but even you watching that video, there's not a single point in that game that ever says it's a projection. What else is it if it's not physically there? I mean, I'm, I, I understand what you're saying, but if it's it never skin. says it to a game, then how does it establish the rule? So if like when they get hit, they get cut. I mean, that's kind of. That might be breaking its own rule then. There There's people too. that were damaged. I'd say the breaking of the rule would be saying that it's a projection. Yeah, they should have actually had f- real fake skin and fake hair. And Although I wonder if it wasn't a projection. I wonder if it just reshaped his face. I don't know. So It's it's an unimportant part of the story. That's, I haven't played the game. And I wasn't. It's not game breaking. It doesn't bother me, but I thought it was funny. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's unimportant. So I just made... Uh, unless her cutting her hair was actually something you had to physically do, it made that scene. Uh, well, she probably, was trying to change well, her she's appearance. She's not going to walk around in her blank from slate. What, what she looked like. No. Well, she's, she's, she's committed a crime. She's yeah. trying to and blend she's trying in. To, she's trying to change. My so, thing is, if it, since we're talking about it now, each each uh, android has a circle on their temple mm-hmm. that shows like when they're processing for information and stuff. And her and one other guy take a knife and take it off and skin goes over it. See, I don't know how the rules work then. Well, no, but my thing is, is why wouldn't every robot that doesn't want to be thought of as a robot or an Android that? just do that? That's something that did take me out for a second. I'm like, this is stupid. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, I'll let you know in the story. The story is the, probably one of the top 10 stories I've ever played in a game ever. And as far as like, gameplay and action go not so much but there are some really 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 tense well it parallels in it. life and that's what it's 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 like playing a movie not playing a video game it's yeah. excellent you should go back and play heavy rain you'd like that um, probably i mean i started and you like it. the walking dead you like all the slow narrative driven 
I like good stories. It could be a game like that, and if I don't like the story, then I'm not going to enjoy it. But I, I think games like that, if the story's not good, the game just won't work in this at all. I just I don't know how many endings there are to this game. I know there's quite a few. Hopefully, it's not a trophy to unlock them all. I don't care about that. Some people might. I know <laughs> that'd be a lot out. of work. Heavy Rain, I think, had I, I I had trophies based on different endings, but I wasn't like every little detail. Basically, by the end of it. Any one or all four of the main characters could probably be dead. And I think you had to uh, aim for that. I just lost one of my guys, and I'm like, that sucks. <laughs> it wasn't one of the main characters. Uh, but I was just disappointed. It was one of the side characters. Did you lose him because you failed a quick time event? No. Does the game have quick time events? It does. That one where you shot that guy was a quick time yes, event, it was. right? Yeah. I'm not a big fan of those. Like Heavy Rain was heavy on those. And I feel like, oh, I'm going to fuck it up and kill a character for good. And there's no going back. But I think that makes the stakes higher. I enjoy that kind of stuff. And it, it's not like... it's not like Quick no, time events of video game. No, you, it's not what you're thinking. It's not like you have to do right way. this to do this to do this to do this. There are stuff like that, like different arrow combinations and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm talking like there's decisions that need to be made in like three seconds a couple times. Well, that's fine. Like pull the trigger or don't... Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. There's a lot more of those than there is... But no, I just made the wrong decision, I believe. And and what's kind of cool at the end is you could look what the worldwide ranks are for for uh, how many, what percentage of people that played this game took this. And sometimes I'm in like, okay, like 95% of other people did this. I've been as low as like 13% on, on some of my decisions. I'm like, well, I'm playing this game different than most people. Yeah. I played um, Mass Effect, and Mass Effect, there's a lot of like... Have you guys ever played any of the Mass Effect no. games? One and a half. Okay. Which one are you referring to mostly, too? The newest one. I'll be honest. Okay. I've only played two, and the most recent one, which is Mass Effect Andromeda. Mm-hmm. With, like Sometimes it'll be like a cutscene, and I'm like, oh, cool, I can like chill out for a second. And I'll like, nope. put the controller down. Nope, shoot that guy or don't shoot that guy. And then they get away, and you're just like, fuck. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm not a fan of uh, cutscenes or quick time events disguised as cutscenes. Yeah, that's messed up, I can't man. remember what other game did. I don't know if it's Resident Evil or something. Resident but Evil did it too. You have to die a couple times to realize, oh motherfucker, I wasn't <laughs> watching when the fucking lake monster fucking popped out or something. You know? Yeah, you always have to watch. Yeah, you have to have your hand on the controller. Yeah, I've done that where in this game where I I check my phone for a second and something popped up and you're like fuck, yeah. damn it. Shit. So I mean it does happen, but I wanted to clear this game out before. I mean I've really enjoyed it, but I wanted to clear it up before Spider Man came out. So for sure. What week. else is coming out in the next couple months? Fallout. Fallout's coming out in November. Uh, that Overkill, the Red. Walking Dead game. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Red Dead. Red Dead. When is that coming out? I think November. <laughs> Maybe. It, Everything's going to hit before Christmas. I it, can't imagine except it would, Kingdom Hearts, sons of bitches. I can't imagine that it would be coming out the same month, yes, but I, I, I would assume that they'd come out two weeks, a week or two apart. What? Uh, Red Dead and uh, Fallout. Because, I mean, they're both huge titles. I thought it's not by the same publisher. I don't think it's like movies where they have to have the so, oh, solo weekend. No, I, but I, I, I find it. Although, you if know, there before were, Christmas, that's there the was that, best time. What, it was 11, 11, 11. A bunch of games came yeah, out. Yeah, Uncharted same time. 3, uh, Elder Scrolls. Mm hmm. But I, with those, you're looking They're going to want them out before the day after Thanksgiving. With those, you're looking at longevity and not the release date, I suppose. Oh, God. That just made me realize. It's coming. It's fucking coming. I hate Black Friday. I love so Black much. Friday. That's because you don't have to work it. <laughs> I never have to well, work I think it ninety again. days from today is the twenty seventh of November. Uh, wah, wah, wah. That's past all that stuff. So the yeah. holidays are upon I us. I used to like going out. Now I'm just like, there's not that many good deals anymore. Yeah, it's you just it's get online. I have a lot of people that come in. They're like. It'll be cheaper on Black Friday. And I'm like, no, it won't. <laughs> it, stuff <laughs> Not no more. Yeah, like big crazy stuff doesn't really go on sale for much more than it does the rest of the year. And if it does, you're not going to be able to get it because it's, it's going to be a door the, buster. Yeah. That, we got a that, good deal on a TV last year. We did? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we did. We got a smaller one. Mm-hmm. Uh, too bad that it'll be after Parker's birthday. Yep. We gave Parker the option. We said, you can either have a big birthday party where we, we can go to, you know, Wherever you want to go. Last year it was bowling with all his friends, and then we did uh, the laser arcade tag. and stuff and laser tag. It's like you could do all that, or we could have a small, small birthday party where you invite a couple friends over for a sleepover, and we'll take all the money we would have spent on your birthday party and get you a big gift. That's cool. You picked a big gift. He's, he hasn't decided. He still hasn't decided yet. I think he's leaning towards a big gift because he's like, "Well, what could the big gift get be?" And I was like, 
I'll buy you a TV and an Xbox and put it in your room. Ooh. That's kind of the ultimatum I got as a kid. My parents shifted from, you can either have a party and have friends bring you gifts, or you can give you the equivalent of what it would cost, and they rounded up to 150 bucks cash. That's, well, that was what, 20 years ago? Yeah. Inflation. It's yeah. like 500 bucks yeah, now. No, for real. Yeah, if you want uh, a 1X. Sorry, it was 150 plus a dollar for as old as you were. So it was 160, 160. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> one dollar difference every year. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's still it's something. Uh, so now it's up to one eighty. Well, because what in in <laughs> Xbox is what two ninety nine. Uh, Xbox One S is three hundred. Xbox One X is five hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm not getting it's in that crazy. One. Well, there's there's no for that. There's no reason to. Well, I can go. They have them for two fifty at Costco. Oh hell yeah! But uh, but I told I told because he's going to a sleepover for the first time this Sunday. You're gonna you're gonna. Get him the Xbox, not a PlayStation. I believe you call that a slumber party. Sure. Uh, no, because we have the PlayStation 4, mm-hmm. and they both want to play Cuphead so badly. Oh, yeah, that's that I right. Figured, Dude, they're going to play it for five minutes, and they're, they're never going to play it again. I know. Might as well give uh, I don't think that's the case with Parker. Parker gets cups. frustrated, but he's persistent. Yeah. He'll play something over and over and that's over That's supposed again. to be one of the hardest games, yeah, like, ever. They played the first level somewhere. We were at downtown. downtown, and they had a demo, and they played it, and they were Kept like... Kept dying. Yeah. But I yep. want to play it. Yeah. So. You're going to sit in the room and play? Yeah. Yeah. Was it you? You were interested in the game um, Cyberpunk 2077? Yeah. They just released gameplay, right? Yeah, like 40 minutes of it. What I didn't watch that? it. Uh, it seems like a mixture between Blade Runner and, and so the, GTA. The devs behind The Witcher, they're making a open world first person shooter, but like cyber future, like Blade Runner esque. Okay. Um, way more vibrant. Uh, I watched like. 10 minutes of it maybe how'd it look i was like i was fuck. I, I think it's one of those demos where it's fucking it can't be that good kind of because it looked freaking really well, good the witcher games are thought of as some of the best games around they are but it's one of those for one it's like, like a guided demo and everything's just so perfect on it like it's dude, running on a perfect tv and I, I was like did ubisoft make this fucking trailer because i don't know my next question it. would be is that going to be a console game or is it going to be a computer game it's a console game right I'm, I'm sure both is The Witcher on consoles now? The Witcher is on both. I think originally, I know the fir- first like one the wasn't. first one was PC and then got ported, but I think the other two are simultaneously at least on Xbox hmm. and PC. But I think the third one is probably all around. Yeah, The Witcher three got released on PC first. I oh did pretty, it? Pretty certain, yeah. But they're a big company now, so it looks pretty good. I'm. I'm That's what two years away probably. I if they know. have 40 minutes of gameplay, maybe it's yeah. not so far away. And I skipped forward a little bit. I, I was kind of pressed. I couldn't watch all 40 minutes, but I was just skipping through like, okay, here's the linear part. But then when they I skip till they walk around the open world, I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. Well. It's definitely something I'm keeping my eye on because the rest of the year, I I, I put in like 180-something hours into Shadows of War. Yeah. And I don't put that much time into games anymore. Like I'll put a lot of time into one game. But this time I'm going to be, I'll have beaten Detroit Human. Uh, Shadows of War was, I started it last November. Or is it the year before? No, it was last November. And now you get into another open world game, Spider-Man. Yeah. So I'll do Spider-Man and then I'll do Fallout. Yeah. I I think the only game that I'm buying, it's, those are the games you buy day of. Yeah. I think it's Red Dead. You gotta watch that trailer. Or, or, I, I just on, honestly I've wanted to get into the franchise but since I didn't I I, it, I find it really hard to care at all I uh, think they're all like different story it's not I don't know if there's only, only one link I know of between Red Dead 1 and I'm 2 I'm sure there would be like uh, it's the same gang that I think 1 or 2 is a prequel though like so you main character from the first game was an ex-gang member and throughout the game he has to hunt down I think two of his ex-gang members he's put up to it by like the fbi or whatever the equivalent was back then and that's two-thirds of the game it might just be that me being selective like that keeps me from I falling mean, like, down the rabbit hole well not only not that that i i don't have the time to play those like i i'm probably not gonna play god of war even though i would like to uh and red dead redemption and you know those games are probably gonna be two of the best games of the year but yeah. i just i if i don't allow myself to play them then i don't get disappointed that i don't have the time to play them yeah i have my like I have my Fallout. You had your Fallout even before it was announced. Yeah, I that have was, I have my Fallout. I might be the same way if Elder Scrolls was announced. They don't have to show me gameplay. I'm just like, okay. Yeah. I'm in. They're not going to release that game anytime soon. It's going to be no. for a next-gen console. I know. They want to focus on Fallout. <laughs> 
you might have another you honestly could have fallout 5 coming out within a year or before or after the next elder scrolls game yeah uh, but no i like uh, any naughty dog game i'm gonna buy right away yeah last of us 2 would be a day one buy yeah. for me did you guys watch the preview that i posted recently of the last of us it shows the the video of like Ellie like dancing or whatever with that chick, and then it shows like a flashback. That to was like, the E3 video. Was it the E3 video? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't see you posted, yeah. but I saw it at the time. I posted it like semi recently, and then there's that video, and then there's a bunch of gameplay. Yeah, I really like that. There's a little tidbit when she's talking to that guy. The guy talks about, oh, your pops was giving me shit today or whatever. Yeah. So it 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 references that Joel's still still alive. Hopefully, uh, was you giving know? me shit. Yeah. You know, there's a so. lot of speculation that he's dead. <sighs> like not straight up in the beginning. I think that there. I think that he's probably dead, and those were flashbacks to when he was still alive. It could, and maybe. before something had happened, like yeah. they were going out the next day, and then the next day, like shit went down. It could easily be the shocking thing, like in the first one, the shocking thing was the daughter trying to run out of town and doing that whole situation. The shocking thing in this one could be that Joel dies in the first ten minutes. I would be or twenty minutes. broken. I'd be so upset. He was such a fun character to play. I don't think it might be a waste for new characters, or new uh, players to the series. Like they won't have any attachment. I know. Who the ne- fuck is buying that game without playing the first? You know one? there are people who do that. I can't remember the last. Year. Those people are wrong. Did you ever play the game? <laughs> Just the sequel? No. I've I guess never. And like, there's been times where I wanted to skip Assassin's Creed games, and I wouldn't because I hadn't beat the previous ones, and that, now I won't ever play them that's, again. That's <laughs> that's so fuck He's yourself. so backlogged. You shoehorn yourself like no fuck. That's I want to play Odyssey, but I can't because I'm 18 behind. I can't, behind. man. I can't do it. The only game that I did that with was Mass Effect. I'm like, I can't. Uh, Andromeda was a whole new thing. Yeah, but there was like... I'm sure they put stuff in the game that you wouldn't appreciate like you just said. Well, the ship that you're transporting with all the people on it is the ship that got transported from the most recent game before that. Like, it's sort of a continuation, but kind of not. Was it the Normandy? Was it yeah. Not? Okay. So they're just in another part of the universe, I guess, trying to figure out if there's life in that part of the universe, if I remember correctly. Star Trek. Yeah, someone explained it to me. I was like, oh, that makes sense if I would have played the other game. Like, <laughs> you know, I would have got normally, that. Yeah, I normally don't like to do that because you miss out on little tidbits and little callbacks like that. Um, that was a really cool game that got a lot of crap for dumb stuff. Like when games come out, they're they're typically a little buggy, you yeah, know, and it's people a, just it's picked a lot it apart. Games. Yeah, and people just picked it apart, man, and it was actually really good. I liked it a lot. I heard both really high and really low things about that. So super mixed reviews about that game, dude. You, yeah, you'd that have makes to it rough it. to judge. Yeah, and that's when you got to play it yourself and you know make that decision for yourself. I agree, especially if you're a fan of the franchise. All that you stepping in kind of new uh, is a little strange, but I mean, if you're a fan of the franchise. Like, I'm really curious to see what this Fallout gets since it's their first jump into a multiplayer Fallout game. <clears throat> Especially since there's no NPCs in the game, which is weird. That is very strange. You didn't hear this? I remember that coming out, like, early on, but are you sure that's still... Yeah. Everything that they've they've posted, they've said, you know, it's your missions are going to be given by the computer from the vault. That yeah. That sounds horrible. That sounds kind of... Eh. Yeah, because... Uh, <laughs> even like for world building even games when you play like um destiny or something you go back to the hub you sell stuff you upgrade you go see npcs to do it they said there's no npcs unless they're changing it i would put i'm not gonna put money let's put I, money let's make a bet and let's record it there's no a single npc in the game that's what they said that'd be i should say friendly npc because all everybody else everybody you fight is an npc you no. can't the non-play- non-playable, non-playable character. character. They're playing them, so they are a playable character. No, you're saying there's no enemies either. It's all players. <laughs> oh, you mean like people, <laughs> you're really fucking shitty? Yeah, game. but nobody references an enemy as a non-playable I character just, by default. They fall. That's that. but yeah, but nobody references. No, we're talking about friendly NPC. Yeah, so somebody that you would you would talk to and yeah, pick but up I mean, a quest even, from or even, something like that. Even an unfriendly NPC. I mean, nobody references enemies as NPCs. I'm sure. It's categorized as it, but that's I, stupid. For, for, if you're out there and you categorize it, a person that you like an enemy you fight, like if you say a death clause an NPC, you're stupid. I don't no, know. No, that's different. I, I don't know. Well, what that's co- what he's saying. I don't know yeah. what Coda's reference. I'm like, okay, we gotta. 
a couple NPCs on the loose. I don't know. They probably have technical terms we don't even know. Yeah. I, it's like I was editing one of the bonus episodes today, and Katrina and I were talking about movie terms because I was looking for like a really cheesy sign off to the episodes Mm -hmm. and I was reading half of these. I was like, what the fuck? Like they're really like industry terms that nobody would know unless you're working, unless you're working. And I was like, that's weird. Sure. Every industry's got a medical industry. Yes. Uh, their own insurance industry. We'll we'll break it down to this. When, uh, when I was, I was pulling an order at my new job, I was like, Hey, we're short this skew. And they're like, what's a skew? What? They (laughs) didn't know what a skew was. They're all, they're all government employees and they've never worked. Uh, retail wow retail. that's so like, funny you think that's something that's universally understood but then we were like hey put some stickers under that mind. so he's like what's a stick yeah i that's, remember that's that a Home Depot yeah well i mean like upc everybody knows what a upc is it's a universal product code that's right fun. but a SKU, what does SKU stand for uh i can't remember i can't remember either i couldn't tell you to be honest um but i thought it was something something universal what is a school stock keeping unit is an alphanumeric code usually six to eight characters long that identifies a product and helps you track inventory huh mm. so we ours, technically ours are 10 digits now we got a thousand blah 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 i remember when that happened yeah i didn't like it nobody did we yeah. ran out of space with 999,000. Well, I guess technically they still have SKUs at my new job. It's just they don't call them that. What do they call them? They don't call them anything. They call them billies? It's the item. I just said we're short this item. <laughs> so I was like, check the blank number. Check the yeah. billy number. The billy number? I think it's billy. You want me to change that to that? Yeah. I'll, I'll, start, I'll start using it and see what they think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one of the fuckers that I work with listens to this, so. I'm sure he'll find this not entertaining. The same as everybody else that's listening right now. Yeah. So Katrina and I were having a discussion while watching Harry Potter, the Chamber of Secrets. Real quick, what's your favorite Harry Potter movie? Why are you making me choose? That's t- that's very hard. Corey? Prisoner of Azkaban. Okay. Solid, solid choice. I'd put that in my top three. I read this because st- Harry Potter came out 20 years ago this week. Mm. Really? Not the movie, the book. Oh. Uh, what the hell was the all right, No, sorry, movie? sorry, sorry. It came out in the U.S. 20 years ago this week. I'm going to say Deathly Hollows, but I'm going to make of the Phoenix. them both one. Oh, Mine is Order of the Phoenix as well. I was going to well. say, but it makes me cry every time I watch it. Yeah, Order of the Phoenix is mine, and then probably Azkaban. Just because then, that fight with me and then probably the first one. Uh, yes. But... Uh, I was reading something that rated Azkaban as number one. Okay. But it rated uh, the first one as number two and Chamber of Secrets is three. And I was like, eh, what eh, the fuck? Eh. If I did Prisoner, if the first one wasn't my second choice, it would be uh, the Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire. And, and when I was reading a little quip about that, Goblet of Fire said it was a completely terrible competition where nothing happened in the entire thing. Someone died. Like, Until the end. I was like, what the fuck? It was an entertaining thing, though. It's not like they weren't doing anything. Yeah. In the long it, run. It, it all led somewhere. Yeah, but like... The return of him. Yeah, the whole thing was like a complaint about everything until you got to like the top three. And I was like... Oh, so that little yeah. short summary, they go... It's so like these backhanded here, compliments. Here are five bad th- things about the last movies, and here are three good things yeah. about the... No, but we were... Katrina and I were discussing... Uh, how on a single salary was Arthur Weasley able to pay for how many kids did they have? They had Ginny, Ron, the twins, Percy, Bill, Charlie. and Charlie. So mm-hmm. seven kids. Hey, what if there's like some Hogwarts financial aid? You know what I'm it's saying? It's Hogwarts free. I don't think it's a private school. Well, that's what we were talking about. It's not a publicly funded school. And where do the, the wizards that can't afford to go to the private schools go to is there a public wizarding school i think that not... is the public wizarding school i don't think it's a private school in the sense of you pay for education well you have to pay for all the books that yeah and they were supplies. probably they were probably like super stoked until they had the twins where they had to buy two fucking sets <laughs> <laughs> like, no more handy we've had these hand-me-downs for like <laughs> 10 years you share a book so is there no cost for hogwarts i i that, that's the debate i mean and if there's not do the kids get do they pay for the meals or is it all supplied? 
Or the meals matter because it's magic. They well, conjure. you're building the future people who are going to be running the Ministry of Magic. You'd want them to know what the hell they're uh, doing. Okay, so we'll say it's do, a publicly funded school, so then there's wizarding taxes. Yeah. But do costs get cut down astronomically because they can just summon everything? They don't have no need for like manual labor. They can all fix most everything with the wave of a wand. That And that's true. I mean, as far as cleaning, even though they still have filch and stuff like that. But like all that food is made by house, house elves, elves that are slaves. For sure it's not conjured? You can't conjure food. I don't know. No, they were no, they, they, they pushed had, food up from underneath right. where the kitchen was. Okay. So they actually bought food. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, prepared so it. All this money has to come from somewhere, plus supplies for potions and, and, I mean, a lot of that stuff I'm sure they harvest. It's a nice thing about that they actually, in the wizarding world, they figure out how to actually manage a public school and make food free for kids. It's yeah, Nice right? to think about they figured it all out. That's a funny. I was listening to another podcast, and they, uh, I guess, there's a treaty that was made in the '60s. They were talking about the Space Force, and there was a treaty that was made in the '60s that uh, uh, we won't kill each other in space. I mean, that's that's the we won't fight in space. Basically. I always wondered about that because I, I was talking about the Space Force, and I was like, well, technically, if we wanted to have a nuclear battle, technically, there's no laws in space, right? But that that there's sense. a treaty. Plus, I mean, it's not like the weapons from earth would work the same in space because they work better they don't stop <laughs> there's no it's not like there's wind or air or any of that stuff where there's no resistance man there gonna be space well it's not pirates? even that but i mean you need like for us to shoot a gun you need a spark right isn't that what hammers the the gunpowder and shoots out the well it, it creates a, a, gun, then. a uh a micro explosion that gets contained well, right inside. you said like that there's chemical no reaction air you know, in I, space i've actually read one thing and it was that guns actually can work in space because they're in a closed vacuum. Vacuum. But that's if you're inside a container. If you're floating around outside in space, it's not going to go. Uh, uh, the article is talking about if it's floating in space, would a gun work? I don't remember. I fucking. Uh, they haven't tested this the yet. Back of the mind. I don't think anybody's taken a gun. I'm sure they have. I just well, don't in think the we treaty, have you're allowed to have evidence. defensive things, but there's not allowed to be offensive weapons in space. And like all the major countries signed it. <clears throat> I don't like relaying information that I listen to on other podcasts, yeah. but uh, I, I just wanted to say what he said. And it was uh, Neil Tyson. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I think his last name is deGrasse. Isn't nah, it? his last name Neil is Tyson. Tyson deGrasse? Neil deGrasse? Neil deGrasse Tyson. I just no. I just watched a podcast with him and Joe Rogan on I know. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. No, his name's what he said, not what you said. I'm telling you. It's it's Neil Tyson deGrasse. Right, let's it's, Neil, it. it's Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm looking it up. <laughs> it's on my podcast that I'm listening to right now because I have five minutes left in it. Because it was three and a half hours. Yeah, that, I to that was a long podcast. Neil Did- deGrasse Tyson. Oh, Boom. nice. Nice. <laughs> Even a broken clock is right twice a day, Anthony. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You're a clock. Uh, so, Space Force. I'm excited. Well, he said that how could we agree to not kill each other in space when we can't fucking decide not how to kill each other on Earth? Very yeah. true. Yeah. Did you hear his story about... <laughs> no, you fucking listen to Joe Rogan's podcast, but you don't listen to your own brother's podcast. I do. Uh-oh. Sometimes. Uh-huh. But Joe Rogan's a good speaker. (laughs) (laughs) I speak perfectly fine. He's just way smarter than I am. Uh, Although even in that episode, he just took a back seat and let him talk. Oh, yeah. Well, how is it? Did you listen to the Chuck Palahniuk one? No. Who is that? He's the author of Fight Club and Choke and a bunch of other stuff. No, someone was telling me to listen to that. It's a fucking... He is an intense motherfucker, dude. He is like... Yeah. You're just listening to him and you're like... Even he steps away to go to the bathroom and Rogan's like, oh my God, that is one dark guy. That's awesome. (laughs) Good episode, though. Yeah. Well, it's just that, you know, I drive for a living and I need stuff to listen to. And Rogan releases like five to seven episodes a week. Yeah. Constant so, content. A lot of hours. Yes. Back to Harry Potter. I was like, back to Space Force. Okay. Space Force. I can't wait till like. Enrollment. We have like uh, snipers who can use the curvature of the earth to actually hit something around. Well, what's well, funny it was Anthony and I both listened to this podcast and it's like, they're not. Uh, he was funny because he said that, you know, this is a thing that we, we should have. Like, uh, like it used to be the Air Force was with... Uh, it was with the Army. The right? Army, and yeah. then they switched it because things are used differently. Now the Air Force manages space, but things are managed differently. And it's not about having weapons in space. It's about, like, cleaning up space debris, which is, like, a huge thing. Where, like, they have to do the launches in between all the space debris that's lo- going around the Earth at 18,000 miles an hour. All the yeah. satellites. Can I say, for, that. for whatever it ends up being eventually, Space Force is absolutely the dumbest name to choose. No, what was it What was it in there? It wasn't Space Force. It was uh, it was Space Command. 
That's yeah, the part space, of the Air Force is called Space Command. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear? Yes, that's Star Command. <laughs> Close enough. No. God it should be Star it. Force then. Yeah. That sounds a little better. Sounds not quite like a five-year-old made it up. Yeah. Can I just make up a fake word? Like kafifi? Yeah. Kaf- kaf- Riboflavin? Yeah. Riboflavin? That's a, that's a real thing. Somebody just made that shit up. <laughs> no, it's a scientific word. Yeah, for like a chemical or but something But every, like every word that's ever been in the English language or any language is a made-up word at some point. Well, yeah. Oh you ever just wonder how they thought of certain words? Bowl. <laughs> Bowl. Road. Bowl. You don't know what that's from. <laughs> Road. Bowl. <clears throat> Bowl. Bowl. First one to tweet me what that's from gets an extra entry into the charity episodes or in the charity prizes that are still up that you yep, can donate to. Still donate for those. Uh, yeah. First person to let me know what that's from. Bowl. Bowl. I think my brain Bowl. is officially full. I can't retain any more information. Bowl. You should know this one, and I'm a little disappointed that you I'm don't. I'm sorry. You should be sorry. I'll tell you after the I podcast. I just said I was sorry. You should be I think sorry. I said Bueller? <clears throat> no. Bueller? No. He said bowl, no. if you didn't Bowl. hear him correctly. Bueller? If you had headphones, you'd hear me correctly. Mm. Bowl. Battlefield Earth. No. I saw that movie in theaters. Damn. I think you did, too. <laughs> you did <that? laughs> yeah. Do you take that back, you <laughs> son of a bitch? I think you were... T- what, what year did that come out, Katrina? Can you look that up? Battlefield Earth? Uh, I saw it with mom, and I believe you were... A tiny child. Yeah, that sounds about right. Like there was Battlefield Earth, and there was another one that I'm trying to remember. Oh my god, this is gonna piss me off so bad. I hate not being able to remember movies. Two thousand. Wow. Oh yeah, I was like seven. Yes. Yes. So you were there. I was a tiny child. That's well. Still a good movie. Mm. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> speaking of that one, we were listening to the Rogan since he's listened to it. Uh. uh he gave James Cameron shit because the night sky and Titanic wasn't the correct sky. Yeah, that was interesting. What was the sky? Supposed well, they know exactly where where the Titanic sank and when it sank and where it's at and stuff. So the stars, stars should be so appropriate. So the stars should have been appropriate and they weren't. Wow. So on the 20 year anniversary, I think they did, they released it with the proper sky. Oh God, he pulled a Lucas. Yeah. yeah he liked that. That's funny. Did you hear him? Do you remember him talking about uh, Christopher Columbus and how much of a dick he was? Yeah, but I mean, that's most people know that he was a complete asshole. But that that's pretty intense to like use the solar eclipse as like leverage for so, the okay. indigenous people to give him. I'll do it a real quick thing is, is what they, he did is he knew that there was a solar eclipse coming and he was he didn't have enough supplies to, to sail back. So he said, give me your supplies. And they said, no, we only have enough supplies for us. Made me think of uh, of uh a bug's life. But, uh, so he says, okay, if you don't give me the supplies in three days, uh, my God is going to block out the, block out the sun. And there was a blood moon coming in, in three days. So once they, once it came, they gave all the food. I'm just impressed that they could figure that out back. Right. I mean, it's crazy. The tools that they had, because the way, when you look at like, uh, the areas of the earth that actually get covered by any eclipse, it is like a wavy coverage pattern. The fact that he could have guessed that it was going to fall right where he was. It instantly makes me think of uh, two things. The last eclipse when Trump was staring straight at the sun. <laughs> and then God, the guy. people that were in, uh, uh, it might have been Riverside, that went to the hospital because they put sunscreen on their eyes to look at the... Uh, oh, my, oh God. my God, idiots. To look at the... Uh, that doesn't work? No. No. What do we used to? How did the little shoebox thing work? We used to have. There are mirrors. There are mirrors. Yes. Okay. I do that watch on video. I always thought with the shoebox you cut a hole in it so that way, like, this it shines through it and you don't actually see. You see the shadow. Yeah, of it. that's what I thought. Well, now they have those glasses you just put on. You look straight at it. It's mm-hmm. cool. Bunch of teachers had them, and they I call got the sunglasses. <laughs> look at them in sunglasses see look straight works. at the sun <laughs> i do all the time with your cheap ass sunglasses is that why you can't see anything that you probably yeah you better hope that your job never figures out that you can't see because you wouldn't be allowed to drive it's just not anthony bad no yeah. but he i has mean glasses at least I mean, <laughs> I, on prescription i think a company <laughs> you want to know what have you had a, a, a we live in southern california there aren't a lot of dunkin donuts and one recently opened up next to where Corey works. Have you had it yet? I've had some donuts. I f- you some had donuts? Holes. Some Are donuts you... and holes. You haven't had coffee there yet? No. 
everybody on the East Coast swears by Dunkin' Donuts coffee. And I'll tell you this, I'm not a huge Starbucks fan, but Dunkin' Donuts is fucking garbage. Like, really? I'd rather go to a smaller coffee shop or just make coffee at home. You, how many coffees have you had? I had one three years ago, and I hated it. None recently? And I had one this week, and I hated it. Wow. It's so fucking terrible that I, I just can't. It's it's gross. It's fucking disgusting. To be fair, I don't really like Starbucks's actual coffee. No, I think it's it tastes burnt. like ass, too. Yeah, All their coffee. Because t- everything's based off the same thing. Yeah, I, I get espresso drinks, so it's not the same thing. Like I love coffee. Like I like making coffee, but when it comes to coffee at places like that, it's not that great. You're right. It does taste burnt or like their filters are old or something like that. If you want, we have, there's multiple uh, decent coffee shops that are smaller coffee shops in this town that is very good. There's one right next to uh, Mast Park, right? Yeah. It's yeah. delicious. Coffee yeah. It's Coffee Meister. It's, it's awesome. You don't have to go in there. You should get really, a Belgian waffle when you, you go in there. You should really ha- try one of these Dude, beers. Dude, my stomach is so jacked. If you drink the next one, I'll drink half of it. I'm all, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He'll go try. Well, I'm not done with this one yet. Well, oh, oh, yeah. My stomach's been so bad. Like I'm going to a, uh, I have a consultation with a gastroenterologist tomorrow. I got Jeez. in a, the first appointment was November 26, but I got in off the cancellation uh, uh, list. list. So yeah, that's cool. You have to go through your urethra. No, no. <laughs> Why would stomach? they go in there? Okay, it's the so. shortest distance. <laughs> So Are I, you sh- no, it's not. No. <laughs> not to the stomach. Now that you're talking about shoving stuff up your uh, urethra. So uh, when I was listening to the Chuck Palahniuk episode of Joe Rogan, oh, God, uh, they were talking about this uh, this short story that he wrote called Guts. That uh, sounds super familiar for some reason. I think someone told me to read that. It's oh. called Guts. Go ahead, go Nick read Logan it. Logan show, I think. And he he <laughs> was yeah he was he was doing live readings of it at like Barnes and Noble and different places a while back. Uh, maybe not Barnes and Noble. That doesn't seem like no. something that I'm reading. But I know he's read it out loud, and they were like, "Do you remember when when Paranormal Activity came out and people were like, oh, it was the scariest movie. People are passing out. People are crying, and blah 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 blah.' Yeah, uh, they were saying that people were weeping while he was telling this, and that people had passed out, and people were just like sick to their stomachs. So it's like naturally, I have to read. I have this. to read it. <laughs> it's was about it good. It's about four pages, and it's I won't say that it's good, but it's something that sticks with you. Like, uh, uh, it's a very well written story. It's only four pages. Yeah, it's a short story. Mm-hmm. It's not meant to be a long, in depth. I should read it out loud on the podcast. Oh, I don't well, know. You'd have to say some stuff. I think there'd be like copyright issues and stuff. Uh not if you credit him, right? Mm. It's a short story that's up available online. And for he's free. published oh, it. Yeah, got it. It was published in Playboy, I think. Oh. Which is funny. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, let me just read this one. About to, you know, <laughs> no, it's uh, uh, <laughs> it's worth a, a read. Rough. It's worth a read. I'll have to. I'll look it up. It's I'll not send for the, the, the okay. weak minded. You know, are you describing it at all? What it's about? Uh, we have no idea. Except it has to deal with uh, people getting hurt uh, while masturbating. Oh, interesting. So I'll, I'll give you that tidbit of information. Like but, real hurt, not like. Well, not ouch. not necessarily. It starts. Well, the way it was described on the podcast was like he 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 brings you in with humor, and by the time you realize it's not funny, you're already trapped in the story, and you got to finish it, and you have to finish it. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? That sounds interesting. You want to read it now too, right? You'll be fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it. It's funny, kind of funny that you say that. Um, this is super random coming out of left field. Uh, you know how my dad got a pacemaker put in his yeah. chest? He told me he's scared to masturbate because he heard that if like, you know, your heart rate goes up all crazy, it can fucking zap you and shit. And so he's all nervous. He I don't know if you're aware of this, <laughs> but your dad was told to stop masturbating at one point because he went, had gone to the doctor and he was all like cracked and broken and, <laughs> and like, messed up. Leave the thing alone. Yeah. <laughs> That's gross. Like, how many times do you have to... Eh, it's probably drug related. It's yeah, probably skin probably. condition and yeah. Well, well, I mean, if you're if you're fucking high as a kite, you might masturbate like 15 times, and I think you should really consult your dermatologist. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna masturbate, use some you know, 15 times. Make sure you're using like jerky. Jesus, that's gnarly. I did not soft. know that about him. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, no, but I thought that was funny though because uh, he tried to have. He wanted me to 
Like, because the pacemaker is under the skin. Right. And, I like, was. It was explained to me as it like the Dark Knight when that guy had the yeah, cell phone in his body. That's exactly what it reminds me of. And he he made me like touch it, and he's like, "Hey." push on it and i was like no i'm not gonna push on it he's like no seriously like push on it and i was like no dude i'm gonna push a fucking button and reset your ass like i'm not <laughs> i'm not doing that there's got to be some kind of button on there like start a countdown yeah beep, 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 it just beep, it freaks beep, me beep. out it made my skin crawl touching it because it's a thing under when you saw his skin. screen skin skin crawl yours started <laughs> jesus he's got a bug under there like the mummy it, yeah that's kind of what it looked like yeah it looked like the scarab underneath underneath the skin yeah. it's weird Ugh. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I usually don't talk about my work very often, but I, 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 you have to, I have to do this. And, and so there's somebody at my work that likes to watch like murder videos and like extreme violence videos. And, and when I worked at with you, Corey, there was somebody at work that liked to do that. That does some shit to you. I can't do that. Some people just don't mind watching it. They're I was talking about this story and not anything specific that just specific, not Pacific specific that it was, uh, it was, it, it, it was something that sticks with you. And it, and I was explaining that they had said people passed out and he's like, Oh, send me the link, send me the link. And I sent it to him. It tickled his fancy. huh? No, 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 no. It's not that. It's that, uh, even though he watches these kind of videos and stuff, he's a very, very, very religious person, mm. which I find contra- like be contradicting ideologies wanting to be very religious and you know most he probably uses that as a release but uh so he and then i was like you know what man you you shouldn't read it don't read it it's it's not a good idea it's not your thing don't worry about it i i I know you're religious and it's probably not the best idea and he's like so the next day he uh, he comes in i said did you read it and he's like i read to where somebody stuck a carrot up their butt and i stopped (laughs) And I go, you're fine watching these people like legitimately die, but you're not okay with this. And he's like, oh man, we've gone to we've gone to kink parties and stuff. I was like, what's a kink party? Oh no. He's like, it's when people uh, uh, act out their sexual fantasies in front of you in a party. I'm like, what? Yeah, that's they're very weird parties, and very weird people go to those parties. And I was like, yeah. But you can't handle a carrot going up somebody's butt. Come that's on, that's what I was thinking what in literary a, form. <laughs> this was information that was given to me free will, so it's not like I'm. I'm you siphoned it from somebody. Yeah, and it's and I don't mind relaying it because I'm not using any names and people don't know where I work. But it, I was just like, what? So did you get an invite to the next king party? <laughs> yeah, I guess the person that does listen to this at my my current place of employment, I will let know before this episode goes up. It's not the same person. <laughs> uh, but yeah, isn't that strange? Like what people are, what some people are okay with and what they're not okay with. Yeah. It's homophobic. That's probably where he drew the line. I think he just doesn't like vegetables. You know what? That might be part of it as well. Yeah. I don't think it's anything about <laughs> the ass. I think it's all about the. the well, food. like I, I. You've been I to can... one of these king parties? No, thank God. It looks like it. I've been to. Case. <laughs> You've been to a key party? I've been to some weird parties, but no parties like that. Um, Where are my carrots going? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys live together, so uh, yeah, yeah, disappearing. Um, I can I can you handle. Want to start smelling them before you eat them. <laughs> Good tip. They're very washed well. Jesus, I can handle watching some of those videos where people are getting like injured or hurt or like like murdered, but it really fucking bothers me. But like the ones where it's like an animal, I cannot watch them. That that's like see something that like I'm okay with and not okay with. I am not okay with any of that unless it is a like, like a, an animal getting hunted in the wild by another animal. Then I don't. Yeah, care. that's different. You weren't a fan of the video I sent you, and I was in Chicago. What video was it? It was the human chandelier collapse from the circus. No, no, I those, learned none of those people that. died. Oh, but they got really, really hurt. If they don't yeah. die, it's okay. No, I don't like, like they seeing, were trapped under that thing. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I don't want to see anybody die. I have no desire to watch those kind of videos. They do something to your brain, man, when you watch, you watch that fight stuff. videos, don't you? What do you mean, like, like where both people go into it knowing they're going to fight? Yeah. Yeah, that's different to me. Or somebody, like, throwing a bully around. You ever watch those? And you're like, yeah. Occasionally. Those but are I'm, great. I love those videos. Yeah, right? Yeah, I guess when somebody gets their comeuppance. Yeah. <laughs> that's it, yeah. I like talk because I got... And get, like, I one-shotted, I, knocked I, out. I, yeah, you know, I, 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 can, I can appreciate one of those. But, I mean, typically none of those people are... are no, I, I won't watch anything where there's like 
gunshots or people getting dismembered or although i did see that video online of that lady that uh it was she was on trial for killing somebody that was on parole and she was trying to take i don't know if she was trying to take him in or whatever and he she shot him and he goes oh my god you shot me like the, you remember the one, that? oh well, yeah the he, was bounty off, hunter? he was off video so yeah. you and, actually, but she got off yeah, yeah that's yeah. fucking crazy yeah it's pretty fucked up, man. He tried to jump out the window or something. I would yeah. too. If someone pulled a gun on me, yeah. I would jump. Try to get the out of there. Yeah, and it was just the way she described it. Like he was trying to go for my gun. I felt scared. No, you for had me to and pull it kid. out of a drawer. Yeah. yeah. What are you talking about, crazy? <laughs> the thing that sucks is that lady will end up going to prison when she kills another person. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. That's fucking terrible. Yeah. People suck. Did you see? Uh, we'll get political for a split second, and then we got to probably end this episode. What? Did I got a story. Okay, real oh. quick then. Did you see the uh, the uh, the primary election for the governor of Florida? Yeah, he wants to repeal Stand Your Ground. Who does? Gillum? Yep. The, so there's a guy that's up to be the first black governor of Florida. Mm-hmm. Is it ever? It's ever. Yes. Oh, my did God. Did you see his, what his opponent said? Oh, my God. Oh, yes, he, I did. Monkey he this said, up? Let's, let's not monkey this up. Fuck that guy. Referring to voting for the gentleman. other a black... Uh, Man. Did he say, oh, it's just innocent turn of phrase. I didn't mean that. That's fucking... I, I hadn't heard any of this. That's horrendous, and yeah. that guy should get punched in the mouth. You should never say anything like that. He just lost himself votes, like didn't that. he? That's his opponent? In yeah. the race? Yeah. The race is still going on? Or he, or no, over? they won the primary. He won so. the primary, so he's on the ballot for the actual race coming up. Okay, so is this person in his party? I don't, or the person? No, it's no. a Republican. Okay, so about he just Democrat. shoot himself in the foot. Hopefully, you would think so. What, We're talking so about Florida. They, uh, Duncan Hunter is is our indicted. representative, and he's being indicted on federal. Have you seen this stuff? Yeah, he, yeah. But they they say he's still the favorite to win the. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so funny. Yeah, I've seen protesters in Alcohol. Good, yes. good. Yeah, I thought it was, he's stealing money. I don't know, unless something's going down down El Cajon near Starbucks. I was like, why are they protesting right here? And they're still. He, they still say he's the favorite. Yeah. He's still probably going to win well, after th- using what, money. What did Katrina from- say? She was laughing out loud the other day because. Go ahead. Because what? The lawyer fees. Oh, he's getting to pay for his lawyers outside of his uh, campaign fund. So he gets to use the money that he's supposed to use in the community to bolster his campaign to say, hey, I'm a great guy, but it's going to go to his lawyer team to uh, defend him against these indictments. Wow. So the money he was being indicted for uh, misusing, he's using for his lawyer fees. Is that legal? Probably. The there's probably a no. loophole. But yeah. doesn't that just seem fucking shady? You're being... Because he has no money. They were talking about times where he would be... They, he constantly overdrew his account. He had to sell his house and move in with his dad. He bought, he, he bought too many Steam games. Yeah, I know. He uh, he overdrew his account 1,100 times in seven years to the amount of $37,000. There's 37, nothing wrong with being wife poor. and his kids. Says Duncan Hunter. It's not a crime. That he shouldn't fly. Unless you're not white. And then it is a crime. Yeah. Anyways, what's your story, Corey? And we'll end on that. Uh, so I hadn't heard any of this story, but until today, uh, I guess a couple years ago, maybe it was just a year ago, there's some viral video of somebody, a lady motorist who was out of gas and a homeless guy, either she picked up or walking by. Yeah. The guy came out of nowhere and he was like an army vet and they yeah, he gave his last 20 money. bucks. Tell to, me he didn't die. No. no. So you haven't heard an update to this? Well, I, I know I that know they donated about. a bunch of money for him to like. Uh, he got to go fund me. They yeah. funded him a bunch of money because okay. originally they said and it's not like he was. It. He wasn't like homeless. He right. He had came out he, for a job and the job he, fell he through. Had bad, poor circumstances. Uh, he gave up his last twenty bucks to fill up some lady's gas tank. She took inspiration. Yes, from I it. hope this has a good story because no. Uh, so they they raised four hundred thousand dollars on a GoFundMe. Okay. Do you hear any of this, Anthony? I, I I've heard. Yeah. Okay. So I have. I'm the only one that hasn't. Yeah. I'm what upset. a surprise! No, I, I know. I read everything. I guess um, the woman and her boyfriend uh, they made the GoFundMe, and, and they took all the money. No, they they gave him uh, increments, and as of right now, I think they've given him two hundred thousand dollars of that. But with that, he's kind of, in their idea, minds have shitted it away. He, they, he bought some, a car, or a truck, a camper, which he doesn't have anymore. He gave money to friends, and now he's. They say he's a drug addict, and they refuse to give him more money unless he cleans up and gets a job. And he is starting a lawsuit, the saying that they're mismanaging the money that people were trying to give to him, and they've already spent money out of that pot, and that he's entitled to their other two hundred thousand. They say they haven't touched a cent. Uh, they actually liked the guy. They were friends with him for a while until he got back in the drugs. That's and a tricky one. They'd burn the money before they ever gave it to him. 
when he's he just he'd kill himself, and they don't want him to do that. That is tricky. That, that's a very so tricky. One's legally probably in the right. One's probably morally in the right. Yeah. I wonder if this will be the first lawsuit that has to deal with large sums of money and GoFundMe. Yeah. And I'm not sure what the bylaws of GoFundMe are. If the person who, if you make a GoFundMe for somebody, is that money the person who created or the person who is for? Well, person who it's for. Well, I know there's a bunch of scams. What if it's for like a kid then? Then it would go to the guarantor, which would typically be a parent. That's interesting. I wonder, it's just does, like death benefits. Does that person have to sign up for it? Because a lot of times people make GoFundMes without ever, like, as like knowing the people passing it on, like they did for this homeless guy. I don't know if he ever knew that GoFundMe existed before. I don't. I don't think they asked him. Hey, this, maybe they did. So I don't know if you ever it's signed. It's going to depend on the legal terminology of the contract with GoFundMe. Because yeah. if you know you're setting something up for somebody, people do it for medical fees. Right. I wonder but, if there's a possible way to put the money into an account that you can only access if you if you fucking pass a drug test. Right. But are those people? They're not the executors of his estate. Are they legally no. allowed to? Make terms? To, yeah. And if so, are their terms too stringent? That's they... going to be what the legal battle will be. Is it, Do they have a legal capability to withhold money from him that was yeah. donated to him? Yeah. And the homeless man, no, I guess, I don't know if he's any longer homeless, but he claims that they've bought new cars and stuff, and they say, that's from our money. That's We've never touched it. And they'll have to prove that. So, uh, but if you look at it, if they were completely honest and nice people who don't want to see him kill himself... Would you do the same thing? Yeah, I mean, they're, that's the moral. I mean, that's right. the moral high ground, and, and that's really tough. That's a tough situation. Well, I don't know. Did this you is, see it another way? No, but I can tell you from my personal perspective, like if there was something like that and it was like, even if it was like my parents or something like that, if they were still doing the same shit they've been doing for forever, I wouldn't give them anything. I agree a hundred percent because they're just, they're self destructive uh, at that point And they're just if, going to, if you earn that money from a million people giving you money, hope uh, expecting you to pass it along to your parents. You know, it's kind of weird. Like, I don't know if it comes down to, can they refund them half the money? Would that be? That's what legally my thing be. I'd be like, we're just going to refund everybody their money. And what sucks if he's taking like, <laughs> I imagine he may still have some money in the bank. I don't know. But I imagine he's getting some lawyers pro bono, kind of, hoping they win the 200000 So he can, they can get so a chunk. So a quarter yeah. of that money will be lawyers. But for the people, if they actually haven't touched the money, if they have to get their own legal defense, I would just, if I was fucking there, I would say, okay, fucking have it. Kill yourself. Have a good time. Drop the lawsuit. And that's, I mean, it depends how you, I mean, you can say that wouldn't be on your conscience, but I mean, some people would feel like that was, especially if they became friends over the last yeah. year. Some people. Well, you got to figure what GoFundMe had a portion of that fund go to them, right? Yeah, ten percent or whatever. So it's really going to boil down to what the legal contract of GoFundMe is and how that's written. Because I'm sure if they are a smart company, they would have that set up. Yeah, I wonder if the people have read it. If they probably it up not, yet. who reads the terms and conditions of anything anymore? Not when you make no like way. a judgment call, like oh, I just want to raise money for this guy. He's yeah. a really cool guy, and you expect it to get. You 10, say 000. that, but I just read the terms and conditions on something recently. Now I'm trying the to whole the whole the whole thing. It was like four pages, and yeah, and you read all of it. Yeah, what was it for? I don't remember, but I was just reading something. You must have been into it, it but you good, don't remember it what it was for. Read. I can't remember. It was something important. It was it GoFundMe? Yeah, no. maybe no. I don't remember. Patreon. So I thought it was an interesting case of morality versus legal. I think the guy's probably entitled to, if somebody raised money with his name off of his viral video and people donate expecting it to go to him. And he wants to be a fucking dumbass. Well, technically, means, it's um, her viral video. Yeah. But, uh, but yes, I think when people it donate, when it has his name him. on it. Yeah. yeah. I, That's, I, that, I can tell you this. No matter how good the, the story is, you shouldn't fucking donate on GoFundMe. Because it seems like so many things are just... Oh, this thing, I would donate, like a kid has cancer, you know, you can't... Yeah, but you can't even guarantee that the fucking person has cancer, though. Right. Everybody, that's like the one thing. Like, uh, everybody agrees why... you should help kids with cancer. You could donate to St. Jude's. Right. Yeah, but if this is one specific family and... If I knew the person, absolutely. But it's not the first time that somebody's tried to scam money online. No, it's not. Any princes in Have Nigeria you ever donated to a Go, GoFundMe? Never in my life. There you go. What? I'm sure you could find a kid with cancer on there right now. <laughs> Plenty of them. Go ahead, Corey. Donate. 
Robert, that's disgusting. <laughs> you just said it. He's like, go searching kid for with kids cancer with cancer anytime I want. That's horrible. How could you say that? Um, but yeah, Maybe no compassion for the children. It's it's just like I mean, obvious. Eh, never mind. I'm not going to go down this road. I agree. I don't know what I have never done. Uh, read a GoFundMe, but I don't know if you have to prove like anybody has a condition that you say, or is it just all you can post? It's you all want. you know. Supposed to be honest. So you can have pictures of a fake kid to, in yeah. a hospital and post. Raising money for little Timmy. Sure. This operation. How are you going to prove it's not true? Nobody checks that. Like after a certain dollar amount. They're getting paid. Why would they check anything? I know that there's been people that have seen situations and opened GoFundMe for those people and just kept the money. Wow. Once you pull the money out and disappear. I mean. That's so shady. Yeah. Yeah. But I agree with you. He probably has the right to the money and they're right for trying. If he is on drugs, not giving it to him, but. Time will tell. It's a catch-22. If you got a job and stay on drugs, you think they give them the money? <laughs> That's all they How do you get a job help? while on drug? A lot of places don't drug test anymore. Really? Best Buy doesn't drug and test anymore. I wonder what really? Kind of- yeah, unless you work in the warehouse where you have to use Big Joe, um, then... They, it makes sense. Yeah. I also wanted, yeah, I mean, because it's hiring limiting your employment is, a, is an excellent idea. <laughs> right. Would it change your mind if the drug addict in this story uh, just uh, just smoked marijuana? Yes, it would absolutely change my mind because marijuana is Legalized not only medically legal here. in most places, but I think it's a different state. I don't know what state. No, I'm just saying. But in a lot of places, it's <clears throat> medically legal, and in several places, it's recreationally legal. Right. Plus, it's a plant but that glo- grows from the ground. If it's illegal, so you're classified as a made. drug user. Do you immediately go- think of like crackhead? When somebody like you find out for me, guy? I immediately think meth. But that's because of personal yeah. <laughs> things that have happened in my life. Yeah. So I've never tried meth. It's interesting to think if you know what drug he's taking, it changes your mind a little bit. What if he's just uh, gets. Well, it could also be does ecstasy. Valium or opiates or it doesn't yeah. have to necessarily be true. A street drug. Yeah. Could just be dropping yeah. acid. Okay. No harm there. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that every now and then. <clears throat> Would that change your mind? If it was acid? Yeah. He's ruining this or brain. Or other hallucinogens like I mean, mushrooms. It's like how often are you doing this stuff? I don't know. So I mean, if, he he's got, if he's got fucking wounds all over his face and he's picking that shit, and then you know you're that's the meth trying to escape the body. Yeah, <laughs> gross. I don't know. Interesting. That's a way to end this episode, Corey. Yeah, I thought it was an interesting dilemma, a vet being taken advantage of. Yeah. Do you want to say anything before we go, Katrina? No, my story is too long, so we can save it for later. All right, we'll save it for next time. Uh, just so everybody knows, the uh, the charity episodes are up and you can still donate and uh, we're gonna leave them up for a couple more weeks to get these last few because i know that seven hours with the podcast isn't easy to listen to real quick can so, at least skip ahead because we have robert kirkman on one episode yeah he's an hour six if you listen to anyone probably listen to that yeah that i'd say helps. that and i think listening to the child's play interview on episode two is good too yeah because you can find out more about the charity um or if you want to see it's just fucking waste <laughs> like fucking done last episode it was second to last episode was the worst sorry kirkman was in five uh, after that we we went downhill six fast. was was horrible i had a migraine we lost it and seven was we kind of pulled it back really okay yeah, yeah there was I, a couple I, times in six that i just started laughing for no reason after kirkman i was just like okay. yeah it was it was but it was fun and um if you hadn't read it you should go read guts uh and tweet me what you thought about it <laughs> and if you haven't tried it you should try the uh the uh, the shake chocolate porter from uh, Balder Boulder Boulder. I knew you were gonna say Balder. If you haven't tried it, go to GoFundMe. Find some kid with cancer. Donate. Oh God. Go go see some footage some, of. Uh, no, donate to the charity. Yes, donate to good things that you believe in. Oh, well, I can tell you this: that the money that goes to Child's Play, they don't have a big overhead like somewhere like uh, like you see some of the big charities where Red Cross still does good things, but a lot of the money goes to overhead because there's such a big organization. Yeah. Where with Child's Play, there isn't a lot of overhead because so I like think five dudes. I think he said three full time employees. I thought he just upped it. They got a couple more or something. Okay, but. so I mean it's really low, and they do some really awesome stuff. And like I said, since we're signing off on this, uh, I have 
uh, signed comics, uh, Norman Reedus signed picture, Jeffrey Dean Morgan signed picture, all kinds of Robert Kirkman signed stuff. And uh, Are they all available to win? And you are, yeah, nothing's been given out yet. Wow. Tell me how. You can donate uh, money to our charity or to our charity thing. And it's uh, one through nine dollars gets you nine entries into the uh, comic books, signed comic books. And anything after nine dollars for every dollar you donate, you get an entry to win the uh, the signed San Diego Comic Con fifteen years of Rick pack. You get a chance to win our signed pictures, which we have Ezra Miller, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, and Norman Reedus, and some other ones. So uh, yeah, make sure you sounds donate. so easy. It's uh, what is the what is the link? PayPal dot me backslash nine to five nerds. There you go. So that'll be it for this week. And uh, you can also go to our Patreon and hear the bonus episodes now. So check it out. And we are out.